Hey there guys, this is Kenneth Lido from Night Tech Night. I know I haven't been making any videos lately, but I thought it would be an appropriate time to come back and do a video on the new Apple iPad. As you can see, it just pretty much looks like a big, humongous iPod Touch. And in a way, it's exactly that. But in more ways, it really isn't. So yeah, I'll go over the features with you guys right now. By the way guys, uh, before I actually go into the design, it's worth noting that this iPad um, was announced by Apple on their uh, latest creation event, which is held in San Francisco, which is where they pretty much hold a lot of their press conferences. So as for the design of the iPad, we'll first start with things that aren't the screen. So yeah guys, the dimensions of the iPad are uh, not that bad at all. The height is about 9.5 inches, the width is about 7.4 inches, and the depth of the iPod Touch, or the thickness of the, not the iPod Touch, of the iPad is about 0.5 inches. And if you don't know what 0.5 inches is, the iPod Touch without a case is about 0.3. So maybe an iPod Touch with a case on or a little bit more is about the thickness of the iPad. As for the aesthetics of the iPad, it pretty much follows the line of the iPod Touch and the iPhone, but also kind of bears some design similarities to the redesigned iMacs in the sense that the backing is all aluminum as well as that black Apple logo on the back as well. So for the hardware aspect of the iPad, we're going to go ahead and start with the processor. So this processor is customly designed by Apple. They call it the A4 and uh, it is one gigahertz. So it pretty much goes along the lines of Snapdragon and all that. So it is really destined to perform well. Uh, so you guys, as for the screen, it is a 9.7 inch LCD LED backlit display. As for the screen's resolution, it is 1024 by 768. So that provides around 132 pixels per inch. And yes guys, like it's iPod Touch and iPhone Brothers, this screen is multi-touch. Uh, since you'll be using your fingers on this a lot, Apple is smart enough to add some fingerprint resistant coating to the screen. So that's a really nice plus. Uh, setting the screen aside for a few seconds, this device has many buttons. It has a home button as well as an on and off button a mute button, and volume rockers. In addition to that, there's also a dock connector on the bottom which you could use to hook up the iPad to your computer via a USB cable, or you could use that port to hook it up to a dock where you could actually hook it up to your computer via USB, or even hook it up to an audio system via output. But I think the best hardware feature yet on the iPad is how it gets on the internet. There's two ways of going online on the iPad depending on which model you get, which I will explain right after this. Um, you could go online via Wi-Fi. Uh, this is wireless 802.11 A, B, G, and N. Then you could go on 3G or Edge which is another really cool feature on the iPad. And since there's no SIM lock, you can pretty much just run the iPad on any wireless network, given that your network's wireless bands are supported by the iPad. Now, as I implied before, there is a catch to getting 3G on the iPad. As a shoo-in into telling you the catch, I should tell you that there are six distinct models of the iPad. There are the models that come standard with Wi-Fi, which comes in the flavors of 16, 32, and 64 gigs. Priced $4.99, $5.99, and $6.99 respectively. Now the catch was that I only stated the Wi-Fi only models. Yes, I said Wi-Fi only models. So you guys, that obviously means that there are Wi-Fi plus 3G options out there for the iPad. And these options are pretty much the same tiers that I named to you with the Wi-Fi only models, only that these cost $130 more and they let you go on a 3G network. And respectively, the prices for these are uh, $629, $729, and $829. So running 3G on the iPad can be done three ways, two of which are from AT&T and one of which is uh, with your own carrier. So if you decide to roll with AT&T, um, there are two plans that may work for you, and they're both contract-free. There's a $1,499 a month plan that will uh, have a 250 megabyte limit. For $29.99 a month, you could roll with AT&T 3G with unlimited data. And since it is contract free, you are free to leave whenever you want with no ETFs or anything like that. 
And again, the iPad can run on another network, but unfortunately I do not have any planned pricing or any of that to give you guys, so I do apologize. As for the iPad's OS, it runs iPhone OS 3.2. There's also indications that this is, of course, a custom version of the iPhone OS because one, it has compatibility with all the apps from the iPhone and the iPod Touch, as well as the fact that you could also run landscape mode on the home screen, and there's also capability for changing wallpapers. So a lot of the stock apps that come with the iPad are pretty much the same apps that we see on the iPod Touch and iPhone already, but are more tweaked to support the iPad's uh, power and screen size. So you can see on the iPad's version of iTunes that the iTunes UI is definitely very different from that on the iPhone and the iPod Touch. As you can see, the UI is more elaborate, and there's a lot more things you could do as you can see, the iPad version of YouTube is a lot better than the one on the iPod Touch and on the iPhone. This is because you are allowed to play HD videos on the iPad, and this is because of its 1 GHz processor, and because of its higher resolution compared to the iPhone and the iPod Touch. I guess you can say the YouTube app on the iPad is definitely better because, well, it really does look like YouTube. It looks more like YouTube than the version on the iPod Touch and on the iPhone. To compete in the ebook market, Apple put an ebook app on the iPad so you could go ahead and read some books that you bought off Apple's ebook store. Navigating through the ebook app is pretty simple. All you really have to do is get the hang of some finger gestures to get in and out of menus, as well as opening up dialog, etc. As you can see, the iPad has its own virtual keyboard, and in a sense, it is different from the ones on the iPod Touch and on the iPhone because of the fact that feedback bubbles don't show up when you press a letter on the keyboard. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing because I can't personally use the iPad because I don't actually have one, but I think that the screen is large enough to see the text that you're typing into. All the apps that you run on the iPad will run great because of the 1 GHz A4 processor inside it. Unfortunately though, this product is receiving a lot of criticism because of the fact that it doesn't take advantage of the 1 GHz processor in the sense that the iPhone OS does not allow multitasking. Finally, it's worth mentioning that the iPad is backwards compatible with all the apps that are in the App Store right now, and if they are iPhone or iPod Touch apps, you could either play them in iPhone or iPod Touch resolution, or you could play it in full iPad resolution. Here's what I think about the iPad. When you look at the hardware, the software, and the design of the iPad, it's definitely a very nice device. The 1 GHz processor is definitely powerful enough to play all the games that are on the App Store pretty well, as well as run all the apps and even play HD YouTube videos. Unfortunately, the iPad's 1 GHz processor is not being taken advantage of because of the fact that there is no multitasking. And multitasking, as you know, is on the Palm Pre and several other smartphones. I don't see why the iPad cannot have it. Despite this though, the iPad is definitely great in the sense that it allows developers to develop a lot of amazing apps that are more dynamic than those on the iPhone and the iPod Touch. We also can't forget that it is also an ebook reader, and the ebook app on this uh, iPad device here seems pretty solid. Uh, it seems like it could be actually a really great reading device. And I think that if you're in the market for, a, uh, for an ebook reader, I think that the iPad is definitely a great choice. Though you do have to keep in mind that the Nook as well as the Kindle, which are both very popular e-readers, have free 3G, whereas the iPad has 15 to $30 a month of 3G. So you have to take that into account. But alternatively, you can see the tablet as like this um, computer alternative where you could browse the internet, you could view all of your media, you could listen to your music on the iPod app, uh, you could watch YouTube videos and all that compared to what the Kindle and the Nook can do. Uh, definitely the iPad, the iPad uh, definitely blows them out of the water. I think that those that want to get the iPad are pretty much the people that want an ebook reader 
as well as an iPod and pretty much a personal media player um, all in one device. Um, if you think about it actually, um, if you want to buy a Kindle and if you want to buy an iPod Touch, the price of getting those two are about the same as getting an iPad. That being said, um, if you are in the market for getting both of those, then sure, why not? Go out for the iPad. But if you're not in the market for one, you know, um, if you um, have both a Kindle and iPod Touch or an iPhone, I mean, I don't think it's necessary to get an iPad yet. I mean, you could potentially wait, you know, a generation or two, you know, to let this whole iPad thing evolve, uh, if it does. Um, so, yeah, that's really my take on the iPad. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please rate, subscribe, comment. Uh, don't be afraid to say your opinions on the iPad. Uh, I know some of you will have some interesting arguments on it. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about that. And I'll see you guys later.